welcome to Unity Presbyterian Church Online. This week in worship, it's homecoming, and Pastor Dana takes a look at the reason why we have a church home. Let's listen. Today is Homecoming Sunday. It is a special occasion when we celebrate all of our members. And more specifically, we celebrate our members that we lost this past year, those who have passed away. We celebrate the fact that they spent time in this church. They poured their energy into this church. And in doing so, they blessed all of our lives and they worked to ensure the posterity of this church. And so we're grateful for those individuals. On Homecoming Sunday, we also remember our members who have been part of this church for an extended amount of time, those who have been here for 40 years or more. We celebrate the fact that they too have poured their time and energy into this church and enriching all of our lives. And we also celebrate our newest members. We celebrate those who have made unity their church home just this year. And so we celebrate all of these individuals, and we rejoice and celebrate the gift of community, the gift of this church, and how unity feels like a genuine family. Unity is a very special place. When you walk through these church doors, you feel love, you feel warmth, you feel belonging and acceptance. You feel like you've come home and that you have found authentic family here. And I truly believe that that is what God intended for us. God wants us to live in community with one another, to create these holy and sacred spaces where we can come together and worship God, to have these spaces that are filled with love and warmth, to have a sense of belonging and acceptance. I truly believe that is what God was doing from the very beginning when he set the Israelites apart from everyone else. God set them apart and made them this chosen race. And I believe that he set them apart so that they could come together as one, so that they could come together as one race, one chosen group, one body of believers who worshiped the one true God God was creating a community for them to live in, to live peacefully and lovingly with one another. And that is what God did for each of us by sending his son to live and dwell on this earth. When Christ came, he created a group of believers. He created a group of Christ followers. And when he died and rose again from the dead, he drew us all together for all of eternity. Christ's Death and resurrection is what allows all of us to be gathered together as one royal priesthood of believers as we become believers in Christ. Peter talks about this in one of his letters. In 1 Peter 2, verses 9 and 10, it says, For you are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once you had no identity as a people, but now you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. Here in these couple of verses, Peter points out how there was a time when we once were not a people, But because of Christ, because Christ came and dwelt on this earth, because Christ died an unimaginable death, because Christ arose from the grave, we are now God's people. And by becoming God's people, we have become a chosen priesthood, a holy nation, a royal priesthood, as Peter puts it. To put it in its most simplest form, because of Christ's death and resurrection, we have been gathered together as one royal priesthood of believers. And by being gathered together like this, we have gained an entire family. We have gained brothers and sisters in Christ. We have gained spiritual mother and fathers. We have gained a whole other family that is separate from our biological one. 
we have gained a spiritual family. And within those spiritual families, a person's church family, there are deep and authentic relationships that are forged. Sometimes it's a person's church family, their spiritual home, that provides healthier relationships than their own biological family. Sometimes it's a person's church family where an individual can finally experience unconditional love, unconditional mercy, compassion, and grace. It's a person's church home where someone can finally have a sense of belonging and acceptance. Yes, I truly believe that God knew what he was doing from the very beginning when he created family for the Israelites, when he created family for each of us. God knew the nurture and the support that we would need, the deep bonds that would be important to us as we navigate our way through life. God knew the important role the church would play in each of our lives. And so he gave us this gift, the gift of community, the gift of a church home, the gift of a spiritual family. To illustrate this a little bit further, I have some video testimonies that I want to share with you all this morning. I thought on homecoming Sunday, it would be important and appropriate to hear from some of our church members, to hear their voices and how this church has been so important to them. So let us take a look at the first video. This is Rick Rhodes as he talks about how important its church members are to him. My name is Rick Rhodes, and I've been a member of Unity for, I believe, 31 years now, or 31 years plus. And I've been thinking the last few days about the person that most influenced me in my faith. And I've been so blessed as, uh, with uh, worshiping with some, some what I would call very strong Christian leaders and Bible scholars over the years. But when I think back to the person who's probably had the most influence, this lovely older lady comes to mind. Uh, her name was Charlotte Fogarty, and of course she was Mrs. Fogarty to us. She taught the first, second, and third graders at a very small church in West Virginia where I was raised. She uh, is the person that patiently described to us or answered the questions, a number of questions we had like why are Bible pages so thin or who came first, the dinosaurs, the Indians, or Jesus, and was so patient and loving, not only in that little classroom, but also through my college life and through even as I started a, a uh, 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 with my own first house and such, if you're giving me plants and things. So I think back and I think about this lady was born in the 20s, raised in the Depression, married with a child by the time she was 18, never had a driver's license. Um, had 10 children, only five made it to childhood, made it through childhood. But through all of this, she influenced my life. And I think, when I think of how she influenced was the, the words that she taught me at different stages in my life that to all things be thankful. There are over probably 70 references to thankfulness in, in the Bible, but, Mrs., but always I hear Mrs. Fogarty's voice when I wake up every day and thank God for the fresh air we breathe and the clean water we drink. So it's amazing what seeds can be planted, whether we are the, the receiver or the sower. Uh, the, my influence was a, from a dear old lady named Mrs. Fogarty. Rick talks about how important the members are here, how it's our church members that are sowing seeds. It's not just the pastor that's up here preaching on Sunday morning, but it's all of you guys who are in the Sunday school rooms, who are on mission trips. It's all of our members who are nurturing our children and every person in this church, either by teaching or leading by example. In our next video, we hear from Roger Carey, and Roger talks about how he was feeling a void until he found unity. My name is Roger Carey. I'm a member of this church. I um, became a member in, I believe it was 2011. Um, my wife passed away on that in that year, and I uh, came out to 
Denver and uh, started attending church. Carol Clark was the preacher and she woke up the spirit in me and I've been coming to this church ever since. Um, I've found uh, members of this church that are extremely um, helpful for a Christian to find support and uh, and I have used that support to make things more comfortable for uh, living life. Uh, I had been inactive for 35 years. Uh, I, when I moved to Birmingham, Alabama, I couldn't find a church that I wanted to call a church home. And so I just quit attending, but I never lost my faith and my trust in God, and I have continued to pray and just tried to do it on my own and found out that I'm really not that great. Uh, I found Carol Clark, and she filled the void for me, and when she left, I thought, oh, no. And then uh, the search group came up with David and my uh, my light came back on and I've been happy ever since in this church. Roger talks very openly about how he had a void in his heart. Um, he knew that his heart was longing for a church home and he knew what God had in store for him and, and finally he found unity and it helped to fill that void in his grieving heart. Our next video is from Judy Robinson. Hi, I'm Judy Robinson. I've been at Unity Presbyterian Church for four years now. Uh, my faith journey began when I was a child. I was uh, brought up in the Baptist Church, in the large Baptist Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. And when I went off to college, I attended a church locally there for just periodically. After college, I got married and started a family and church was sort of an off and on thing. My husband was not too interested in going, but I went um, and took our oldest child. And then um, our marriage ended after seven years and I moved back to Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, where I had family. and. Um, raised the children, worked full time, did everything else that a single mom does. And church was sort of an off and on thing again. And over the years, it, uh, it did not take priority in my life. When I moved to Denver to be closer to my daughter's family, uh, it was 20 years ago, uh, my um, son-in-law sort of kept after me to find a church, go to church, go to church, and, so I said, I will, I will, I will. And um, over the years, I went to churches around the area. Some I would attend for six months or so and then decide it was not a good fit. I'd move on and find another church for maybe two or three months and just didn't feel right. So one Sunday morning, I got up and got dressed and had no inkling where I was going to go. Uh, I got in my car and God led my car the Unity Presbyterian Church. It was like I had no control over the car whatsoever. I walked in the doors and I was immediately at home. For the first time in my life, I had found a church family. Uh, it's been the most incredible journey of my life. Um, I love the church, the people, it's just been wonderful. So that's a bit of my church life and my journey, ongoing journey. Thanks. Judy talks about something that probably all of us have experienced, church hopping, going church to church, just searching for that church home, that place that feels right and comfortable. Um, and she found it here at Unity. And that's what it feels like when you find your church home. It feels like you have immediately found this community that you can actually call family. It feels like belonging so that you don't have to search any longer. 
each of the individuals that we've heard from this morning, they've talked about what it's like to experience this warm and loving community. What it's like when Sunday and going to church becomes more than an obligation, when it actually becomes your church home. And I believe that God knew that he was doing that for us from the very beginning, that he was creating these places of community, these places that we could go on Sunday morning, and we could find a home and have a sense of belonging. God knew the gift he was giving us, the gift of community, the gift of a church family, people that we can rejoice with in our good times, and also people that we can weep with, in our times of struggle. Let us take a look at this next video. This is Dave Feckmeister. Hi, good morning. My name is Dave Feckmeister. Gail and I have been members of this Unity Church since 2012. I've been asked this morning to share my personal faith journey with you and try to do so in two minutes or less. So here goes. I was raised in a Christian environment in the Midwestern United States. My first 12 years of education were in Catholic schools taught by nuns. The social and the academic discipline was strong. The spiritual learning was through catechism as opposed to only the Bible. Sunday church attendance was mandatory. Works is what would get you where you wish to go. The next part of my personal spiritual life continued in the same manner. My early family life included marriage, three children, and residing in several different locations. This part of my life, unfortunately, also included the death of my first wife due to the ravages of depression. In the late 1980s, Gail and I married. Gail grew up as a Baptist and a Methodist. We chose a spiritual path that was a compromise. That compromise including, included joining one Lutheran church, one Reform, Reformed Church of Christ, and two Presbyterian churches. Most of these trans, transitions were due to job transfers. As an aside, I do need to mention that several years before we married, Gail lost her then 16-year-old son in death also due to the ravages of depression. Maybe Gay and I getting together was not just a coincidence. In every church of which we have been members, we have met really wonderful and supportive people. We have received constant booster shots of faith from the pulpit. As life continues, my personal faith journey today consists of learning more about the Bible, learning more about how to be a disciple, and learning more about how to repay to others the good deeds that have been done for me. And importantly, how to encourage more people to join in and become active in this vibrant church community. I am so grateful for Dave's testimony and for just sharing his story so candidly and transparently. Dave talks about the struggles that he and Gail faced in life, and all of us go through that. No one is exempt from hard times. That's a guarantee in life. You're going to come up against heartache and strife. But Gail talks, or Dave talks about how he and Gail faced these struggles, and they found strength in the church, a booster shot in their time of weakness. They talk about how the faith community was so important in supporting them through that time. And that's what church is about. That's what it's designed to do. Church is this place that we come to and we're, we're usually happy on Sunday morning. And sometimes we have a meal and we have a great time of fellowship. And we go on mission trips together and we, we do all kinds of things through the year. But it's also a place that you come to when you're broken. You come here when you're needing healing, and you will find God, and you will find God's people to help nurture you back to wholeness again. That is what it means to be a holy nation. That is what it means to be a royal priesthood. It means we become this holy community, and we come together as a holy family, and we lean on one another. 
during the most difficult parts of our life. I have one other video testimony that I wanted to share with you all this morning. And this one is of Barbara Winkles. And Barbara is here with us this morning. We are so glad she could join us for homecoming. Um, Barbara and Dennis have moved to Bessemer City. Um, But I think it's important to, to share her video because her and Dennis have created a legacy in this church that will continue to inspire our hearts for many, many years. So let's take a look at that video. Hi, I'm Barbara Winkles, and I've been attending Unity now for 34 years. And I wanna share a story from my teenage years. Um, 14 years old, and I have had my grandparents living in Chicago for my first 13 years. Didn't really know them. We got to visit with them every once in a while. But uh, when I was 13, they moved to Columbia, and I was excited that I got to actually be with my grandparents and get to know them as people. Um, And particularly my grandfather was just a a wonderful, warm, um, gentle soul. And so that was was really um, just a, a wonderful expansiveness in my life. Uh, But summer of my 14th year, uh, my grandfather is cutting grass in the summer, has a heart attack. My grandmother calls us, we go over, um, he is in the house. They look to me and they say, Barbie, you know CPR, which I had been trained in a lifeguarding class, and but I had never done it on a real person, much less my grandfather. I attempted some chest compressions, but it didn't work and he passed away. And I got very angry at God as far as to have given me the time with my grandparents and with my grandfather and then to have him taken away a year later. And I was really frustrated dealing, how did, you know, why did God do this? And so one night I went and I, I grabbed my Bible and I just opened it up without any thought of where I was going, what I was gonna look at, and I came to John 14, starting at verse one. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And that spoke to me as far as God had a plan That plan was he had a room, a a place for my grandfather, and he was with our Heavenly Father. And so that was a huge assurance of God's plan. I love how Barbara highlights that we don't have to have it all figured out. I love how she highlights that we can be angry at God that we can wrestle with God about what we have faced in our life. I love how she highlights how our salvation, what we believe is a lifelong journey where we are constantly peeling back those layers, where we are constantly combing through what we believe. These are great reminders for us today. These are great reminders that we are all on the same journey through the good and the bad, laughing together in our times of joy, weeping together in our times of sorrow. That is what community is about. That is what it means to be the church, to be one holy nation, one priesthood of believers. Friends, Christ came to earth, and he died a terrible death. And when he arose from the grave, he gave us all a beautiful gift— He gave us the gift of family. 
Many of us have lost family members. Many of us have strained relationships with our family members. But thanks be to God for giving us this gift, the gift of a spiritual family. Thanks be to God for gathering us together as one royal priesthood so that we don't have to journey through life alone. What a gift that is. Amen. If you would like more information about Unity Presbyterian Church, please visit our website at www.unitypres.org or visit us on Facebook. This is the Unity Presbyterian Church Podcast. Have a great week.